After a beautiful night under the stars cooking, we headed out the next morning so that we can get the ball rolling with screening some of the school kids. But first, two amazing stories that I want to share with you, and I want you to take note. The first story is an understanding on the importance of these projects. And the second story, I'll leave a link down below so you can watch it in your own time. Um, it is important uh, to, to, to have people coming here to, to, to share their experiences with the kids. Uh, because with us as Great Plains, we, we're just mostly focusing on tourism. Uh, we know conservation and tourism. Uh, we are not experts in things like uh, eye testing. Um, those are other things that we, we have been not looking at it at with, 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 other, with uh, like a bigger eye or a brighter eye on it, but we think it, it, it will make a very huge difference. It will help uh, the kids to advance, uh, it will help the kids again to excel in their academics. Um, so it's really important to have people bringing other uh, help to these kids and to these communities. Hello, Anthony. Tell me the story. Hi. Nice to meet you again. Yes. How are you? My name is Kia, Kia Haposhipa, or Mama Kia. Uh, I would like to thank you, thank you very much for providing us with the reading class. Paul, who do we have here? Ah. We've got Wapello. Yeah. <laughs> 2019, we did a screening project to them. And he, he ended up making this. And the project purchased this from him. And that will then be recycled back into the community. Stop now, Anton. Famous bakery. The one that tastes fantastic. I think they just make it normally, but it's so good. Oh. Now we're just waiting for everyone to come through. They go, it's just the I'm trying to find the next one. We don't only love helping the kids, but we always get to interact with them and have such a great time. This is the Mantaba song that we remember from the first project and it brought so much joy to us it became the theme song for the project. It's now you can hear them sing it out with such joy. So after all of that excitement, we headed off to the next little village called Eretzi. This is a little school that's only got around a hundred children, but it's growing. We do our screening by the vehicles outside on the walls and inside in the classrooms, depending on the weather. But here, this is special. They had to build an outside classroom. And if you look very closely, you'll see the wiring around the classroom that stops elephants from interfering. <laughs> Being at the end of the village, this can be quite a challenge. It is mostly during the evenings when the elephants come in in early mornings, when the children are still walking into their classrooms. So safety is a priority. Every region is tribal. They all follow their own protocol, and this has been going on for decades. Here is an amazing story explaining the sensitivities per region. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.
the old people used to tell us this is you can't eat this no you should eat that yes doing that uh, to avoid that thing being eaten in a, in a large number yeah. and to avoid it going extinct they would tell you you, sh you shouldn't touch this you should only eat this just because it's in, it's in large number at that time yeah the reason why we have totems <laughs> i am from the bibira tribe okay i my totem is the nare the buffalo okay the king buffalo okay these people got a different uh, totem so okay. they eat the buffalo ah. i cannot eat the buffalo because it's, so it's my like a totem sacred am animal for you yes so that side the, the buffalo can increase in number yes. this side even if it goes the Oops. numbers reduce that side the buffalo can still survive so what is their totem mm, different some of them okay. say it's TP, but they've got different totems. Wow. It was made in such a way to our, <laughs> for them, for those that tribe to eat only that animals and leave the other okay. to, to wow. live well in that side. The other side doesn't eat the, the, the animals there, wow. they eat wow. only the others. That's clever. Right? So in yeah. a way of yeah. letting that animal survive that side, if yeah. they finish it, they eat it still there. After this great story, I headed off to meet underneath the great baobab tree which we did a few years before. Unbeknownst to me, Ivor and Carl had stopped off to help this poor lad. The story goes that they couldn't tow him because his clutch wasn't working amongst other things. So if they towed him, they couldn't release it so that he could carry on driving as he was only using his handbrake for braking. This created a number of challenges which they tried to sort out. However, I don't think they succeeded. Being unsuccessful with an engine that just didn't care we arrived at the next school, which was called Gudigwa, at the end of the Saronga Strip. We set up our tents, chatted, caught up from the last few days and started planning the following day. The heavens decided to open and relieve itself of all the water that it had inside the clouds. We had 48 mils of rain in just under an hour. People decided to shower, some decided to cook, and others just decided to sit back and watch it happen. After a calm, quiet night, when the rain subsided, the kids started arriving at the school and Carl popped over and we had a chat that is not a very easy one to ever have. Mostly, people don't know what it's like in these regions. Four days ago, little Johnny. Johnny is walking to school and he gets trampled to death by him. Only, um, I don't change my shorts. It's brutal, dude. And the thing is, is that we haven't been leaving early enough to see them. Yeah. They have to leave early because they're walking four or five kilometers. Yeah. That creates more of a, more of a problem for them. Yeah. Just increases their risk. Yeah. So here we're going, oh, you know, I haven't seen any Ellie's or oh, when we're we going to see them. And they're going, well, I don't want you anymore yeah. way any less from the luxury of our vehicles you know yeah where we have the power to get out of there i don't it's a shame, quite radical right? yeah i think it's not cool at all now all right let me clean up the camp after finishing that brief tragic chat we headed off into our chairs and started setting everything up to making sure that the kids were taken care of the way we always have Okay, so we we we're doing this yeah. cylinder road, which has been known to be tough. It's mostly used by the BDF. Um, the BDF is the Botswana Defence Force, and they've got the big trucks, which means the road is slightly wider, which raises the island, and we don't have the uh, um, that size axle. So it's it's. It's going to be brutal. It rained heavily last night. It hadn't rained for two weeks, so hopefully the rain's just sunk down. Uh, we're going to have a lot of sand, but we're also going to have a lot of mud, and it's the mud that worries us. Some of the mud that we've been through before, 
the hole is literally the height of the vehicle. We definitely won't do that, so we'll have to drive around one of that. It could mean that we're chopping trees down, it could mean that we are delayed in trying to find a route. So um, we have to be vigilant. It's got 200 kilometers and it's going to take us about nine hours plus minus. So it's a, it's a long road. It's a very, very long road for time, not distance. And that's the challenge at the moment. So we, we need to get out of here. That's the problem. Um, but it's good. Uh, we're excited. This is the last bottleneck that I've been worried about. So after this, I'm going to, I can sleep well. So we need to get there uh, before dark because the gate closes at 7 and then we still have to drive another hour, 20 minutes. Hey, where, where are you going to sleep well though? Uh, I'll sleep well in the bush. <laughs> it's very wild. There's no cell phone signal. It's complete wild animals. And I watched a video last night, by the way, um, on lions wading through the water. So <laughs> it just added a little bit of tension. Um, so Listen. you're on the ground, so that's okay for yeah, me. Yeah, I'm on the ground. What, what, how, why do you get to sleep so good? What do you have? What, like, what does that work out? This new Eye Camper um, inflatable mattress is just, it's just brutally good. I slept so well last night. I, I turned, I think, four times Woo! and I really, I absolutely love it. Packing it away, I'm getting, getting it into, into good momentum and I'm enjoying it. Um, and I'm, I'm, it's really a game changer. I'm, I'm excited about it. But that's enough about them. I can't steal it. No, you're not. Don't, don't even bring it up. You'll be sleeping. <laughs> Have you, have you met my wife sleeping on a mattress? <laughs> uh, you don't need to learn one. All right. So we finished packing up and the fun and games were over. We started setting our vehicles up for the long high grass, which ended up hitting us sometimes on the windshield. We had to clear a bunch of roads, but little did we know this was just the beginning of a very long, long two days. Elephants in front of us, elephants in front of us. Whoa. Calm down, calm down. Just don't move. Don't move. <laughs> 